Heidi ho it's Exosia here, coming at you live. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, I'm uh, sitting here listening to the uh, the new Stone Temple Pilots album with Jeff Goot as the singer, uh, which I vowed I would never listen to. Uh, I'll never listen to the crap with Chester, and I'll, I really didn't want to listen to this. And I, I decided to give it a try and see what the guy sounded like and see what the music sounded like, because I, I really wasn't a fan of the, the, the uh, 2010 album with, that still had Scott on it. Uh, sober Scott. <laughs> um, it just... Uh, it, Stone Devil Pilots had five great albums uh, despite my lack of interest in core uh, I mean I like the album I'll listen to it still um, but I prefer the the other four uh, purple tiny music number four and uh, uh, Shangri-La Di Da I, I prefer those over core but 2010 album just uh, I mean it had good tracks on it but it just wasn't it wasn't a standout album and I really don't ever care to listen to it again really um, so I've decided to give this new album a chance I'm about four tracks in so far and I thought I, I needed to make this now because I, I didn't feel like listening to the rest of it before I started talking about it uh, because I'm going to go into what I, I do and I don't like about it. Um, <clears throat> so, if you go back to Core, uh, that was the first album. It was, you know, Stone Temple Pilots were together, I think, six months before they got signed and they recorded Core. And for, for being together for that short a time, that's a great album. Um, and they got they got uh, compared to Pearl Jam a lot because Scott's vocals sounded kind of like Eddie Vedderisk in, in certain certain songs, but uh, not really. I mean, I used to think that back in the back in the '90s when it came out, back in '92. And now that I'm older and I've listened to a lot more of both bands, I've realized that it you know it really doesn't sound like Eddie. Not really, um, but I. I I understand the comparison. Um, Core was out, and and it kind of had that. It kind of had this uh, this you know uh, the same tone, the same tones throughout the entire album. The, the, it never really changed sounds. Uh, the, the the guitars had this chorus effect on it throughout the entire thing, and it was just a. Uh, it was, a, it was a really produced album, and I think it was even the same guy, this uh, Brendan O'Brien. I think it was the same guy all throughout those first five albums. Um, which, you know, is strange, because the, each one sounds different, but the other four, you can definitely tell it's the same guy producing it. Uh, whereas that first album doesn't sound anything like the others. But I guess, you know, the, it was their first album and the label wanted it to sound more polished or what I don't know. But then you had Purple, and when Purple was originally released, I liked it, but I didn't like it as much as Core um, because I was stuck in that early 90s mentality where everything had to have a specific sound and it w I wasn't open to the new direction of, of Purple. Um... I mean, obviously, over time, the album grew on me because I, it's my favorite STP album ever. Uh, it's the best thing they've ever done, uh, Purple. And that was that was the first album where Scott, I believe, was started using heroin. Uh, I'm not sure if he, I'm not sure if he was high for recording the album, or if he got if he started doing that shit during the Purple tour. I think I, I don't know. I don't really know, but um, that, that was the, f the first album where they really sounded like STP as you would know them. Um, if, if you were a fan. If you weren't just uh, uh, the people that knew Plush or Sex Type Thing or, you know, stuff from Core. Um, because the, none of the albums sound anything like Core um, after Core. 
that was kind of like the first album where they really got their sound, where DeLeo, uh, Dean DeLeo started using like jazzy chords. I mean, he used some jazzy chords in, uh, in core, but not really. I mean, it was a lot more uh, in, in, the, in the following albums. Um, and the, the production went down a little, down a notch, which really is better because it just sounds better. It sounds more like them. Um, Scott, he's always had <laughs> crazy lyrics and, and great vocals, but he sounded different in Purple. He sounded different every album after Core. <clears throat> he lost that. I mean, he didn't lose it. He still had it uh, in Shangri La Da, number four, and the heavier stuff. He, he still kind of had that, what people consider to be the Eddie Vedder ripoff um, tone. Uh, which it really isn't. It's not. I mean, but it, I get it. I get it. But um, it, Purple really lacked that, and it had uh, more high vocals, and it had uh, softer vocals. It had softer songs. It had some jazzier songs, including that bonus track. Uh, Tiny Music came out in 95 or 96. 96, I think it might, might have been. Um... Yeah, I think it was 96. And uh, I, I, I pretty much liked that album instantly because I had already gotten used to the new direction of STP, the purple direction. So I would started liking purple, and I, and I really like tiny music as well. Um, it has a weird retro quality to it. It has a lot of songs that kind of remind you, or not remind you, but uh, I mean unless you're old enough to be reminded, but kind of makes you feel like you're in the, the 40s or 50s. Like, it's like old school kind of, uh, know, like Lady Picture Show. Has, I don't know, it just has this old quality to it, and it, it just makes you feel like you're back in time. Um, and and still has a lot of the jazz chords, uh, and so I know, and um, still has a lot of the weird, just... STP signature sound, just the uh, art school girlfriend, you know, the, just, I don't know, just, it's a, it's a strange album, but it's great, and not quite, not quite purple great, but it's, uh, it's a great album, then you get number four, and I remember when it first came out, I heard on the radio, I heard, uh, Down, and they had callers, uh, people calling in to the radio station, complaining that, oh, why are they sounding like corn? <laughs> um, because it was a heavier album. And I remember STP was in the studio, and they were like, well, how do you know it sounds like corn? This is the first time you've heard anything. <laughs> you know, so, and, uh, <clears throat> and it, you know, they, it, it was just a heavier album. It, uh, you know, they, they didn't uh, sound like corn. But there were a lot of heavy tracks on number four, and it's a great album. It's great. Um, I, I mean, uh, Pruno, you got uh, some of the songs that never became singles are the best songs on the album, as usual. You know, that's usually the way it is. But you have Glide, Pruno, you have uh, uh, Atlanta. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of great tracks on number four, MC5. Um, and it, it kind of started the whole... It kind of started for me. I, I don't know if anybody else... Like, probably nobody else thinks this. But it just... There's there's a lot of songs on number four and Shangri-La Da especially where they started getting this vibe. This <laughs> They started getting this vibe where, like, it made me imagine Amish people singing their music. And like Pruno and uh, on Shangri La Da, there's like Regeneration, and it's just like songs like that have this quality to them that make me kind of laugh because I just imagine Amish people performing them, and I don't know why. Kind of like uh, the Weird Al video for the the Amish Paradise. It just like I don't. Know, it makes me like think. I don't know the way Scott's vocals. Uh, just the way he writes <laughs> it's like has this quality to it that just sounds like an Amish party <laughs> I don't know how to explain it I wish I could but it's, it's hilarious when I when I listen to STP um, but number four is a great album uh, 
some of the songs uh, you know are better than others but <clears throat> it's still a good album it's great um then you got shangri la da and at first i really i didn't know what to think of this album because it was i was kind of like uh oh, why are they releasing more albums i was like they're done you know um I was like, it's probably not going to be that good. And I, but then I started listening to it, and it's really good. It's it's I like it better than number four. It's my second favorite STP album. Um, just barely beating out Tiny Music, uh, but it's it's definitely right under Purple for me. And there's so many. There's such a variety of songs on the album. I'm talking about Shangri La Da now, and. <laughs> it's it's like there's such a variety. It's it it almost doesn't feel like one album. And it was going to be a double album, for what I understand. It was supposed to be a double album, and the label decided to scrap that idea, and they just made one album, which is good because I like the album. But it's it doesn't sound like all the songs were supposed to be on this album. It sound like Days of the Week. It sounds way more produced than the other tracks and I mean I know it was the first single um, and they usually do that with the singles they like give it extra production or whatever but it's, it just doesn't feel like it, the rest of the album it doesn't fit it doesn't fit with the I mean it's a good song but I just don't think it fits the album and then you have Hello It's Late great fucking song and it fits the album just fine but it was actually written in 94 for Purple and why they didn't put it on purple, I don't know. It's just fucking great. It's a great song. Um, it just uh, there's so many good songs on that album, but I, but I feel like there are too many, there are too many songs, but not really. I mean, uh, I don't know. It, it's it's a great album, and a lot of people don't like it, and I don't think they really give it a chance because there's. Uh, Everybody seems to hate regeneration. I think it's one of the best songs on the album. It's it's one of those Amish Amish songs. I don't know. It's so good. I just love. So I miss Scott Weiland. I miss Scott Weiland. Um, he had a special writing style for his uh, vocals, and that's where Jeff Goot lacks, in my opinion. Uh, so far. I mean, I've only heard the first four songs but uh, of this new 2018 album. Uh, but I'm skipping ahead here. The 2010 album, uh, I, I gave it a listen once back when it first came out, I think. Or no, it was like a few years later because I didn't even know about it. Uh, maybe till around 2015 after Scott died. <clears throat> so I listened to it around then. I didn't really get into it. Decided to give it another listen the other day, and I'm like, it just, it just doesn't, nothing sticks out to me. It's not, it's not, it's a forgettable album. There are some good tracks on it. I like some of the tracks. The first, for the first two and the fourth track, and then there's like a few others that are okay, but it just doesn't, I don't know. Uh, it, it has more, it was the first album that they did that wasn't produced by uh, Brendan O'Brien. It was produced by the DeLeo brothers, and it sounds good production-wise. It sounds okay, uh, <clears throat> but it's like it sounds the, the the writing is different. I don't know. It's just it's more like a bluesy '70s rock album. It's not. It doesn't sound like STP. Um, it sounds like new rock band with the guys from STP and Sober Scott because <laughs> uh, his vocal lines are just poor in the, the 2010 album not not all of them but it's, it's just not the usual STP um, so then you have this 2018 album and so far I like the music I like the production I don't know who produced it I'm not sure if, it, if Brennan O'Brien's back or not I, I don't know if it's the DeLeo brothers and they just changed their style because it sounds more like their older stuff it sounds more like the, the middle four albums um, but then the, the, the vocals I mean the, the singer's fine I mean he's, he sounds fine his vocals are fine it's not he's not bad he's, he's not he, he doesn't sound like he's trying to copy Scott but he has a Scott tone in his voice and his own tone at the same time kinda 
It's a little clearer than Scott's voice, not as like raspy. <sighs> I don't know. It's it's like um, the, the just the vocal melodies are not STP quality. Um, I mean, I I immediately immediately started thinking of separate vocal melodies every time I listen to a song. It's uh, I just instantly go into writing mode and start writing alternative melodies, like alternate melodies. And I do this a lot when I listen to people play at open mic. I do I, I when I hear bands play. Or even bands that I like, like Counting Crows, so any any band I I listen to, I tend to do this. I tend to rewrite their songs in my head. Not all the time, because a lot of the time I really like the songs. But if I if I find something could be different, or if I hear something different I, that I think sounds better, I'm like, man, it should be like this, and I start thinking that, and it's just like that's what I seem to be doing with this, and. And it, again, it's not it's not the guy's vocals. He sounds fine. I mean, it's like I could deal with the it not being Scott. It just it's missing something. It's missing the the, the 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 ingredient that adds the craziness to STP, the originality beyond the music. And it sound it's making music that sounds really good. The guitars and, and shit sound really good. The, the the music sounds great. But the vocals come in and it makes that go down to uh, normal rock band quality. And what I mean is like it's like it's it's making it sound more like two two thousand ten album. Uh, not you know, not the songs aren't as bad as the 2010 album. The songs, without the vocals, are great. I love the chords and on the the, the the music. It's it's a little more STP quality, but the 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 vocals come in and like I said, it just makes it sound like regular rock band because it's like singing like these regular blues lines and shit, and it just doesn't sound. It's not original. It's not it's not original. Uh, you have to be able to think outside your brain. <laughs> if that makes any sense to anybody. You have to be able to think of things you wouldn't normally think about and you wouldn't normally do or hear. And you have to be willing to try things that may not sound good, but you, you might think they will, and maybe they will. Um, but that's the only way you find original vocal melodies is to try things you wouldn't normally think. Because um, you tend to write what you what you're used to hearing. You tend to write to your influences, and you tend to write what you think would sound what you would hear on the radio. You think, oh, well, this would be on the radio, so I'll sing that. But it's the same exact thing as everything else. You need to try. Uh, not doing that and just go against everything you're thinking and that's how you find the real vocal melodies I'll call them the real vocal melodies that's that's how you find what should be there <laughs> um, and not a lot of people do that it's it's not and, and you know those are the people that usually are on the fucking radio because that's why we hear this shit all the fucking time all the same shit because the radio says oh well this is safe because this is what we're you we usually play <laughs> so it's like you know so all that shit gets on the radio and then people like fucking that do what i do are like playing open mics so <laughs> but you know i don't know it is what it is and I don't know. It's just that that so far for me that's what the new album is. Again, it sounds okay. It's fine. It's a fine album so far. Um the singer just it, and it's not his fault. It's just he's not Scott. <laughs> he's not Scott. <laughs> it's not his fault. I mean, he sounds great in a rock band, just not STP. 
quality. Uh, the, the vocal tone is fine. Tone is fine. But it's kind of boring because of what he's singing. It could be better. I would really love to get in the studio with those guys. <laughs> but that's not going to happen. So, But um, so I'd just be curious to see what that would sound like anyway. But... <clears throat> So that's my my view on the STP 2.0, um, or I guess it's 3.0 if you want to count Chester. But uh, I don't know, fucking Chester. Um, not a Lincoln Park fan. I don't, I don't care for Chester. Whatever. Um, anyway, that's it. That's the end of the video because this, this shit I got to edit out of this, and then I that's it's already past 20 minutes takes forever. All right. See ya.